Hi friends, my name is Griselle with Psychic MD and I'm here to do another pick a card reading. So this is going to be the preparation and selection portion of the reading. You don't necessarily have to stick around for this part. For those of you that are a little bit of pyromaniacs, you might want to stick around for this part. But in here we are going to set intention on what it is that we'd like to do and set aside some sacred space, cleansing our area, as well as doing our pile selection, okay? So let's get this going here. Nothing cooler than that, I think anyways. Maybe we'll get some more going here. So if you guys are new to my channel, I want to extend a super warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for stopping in. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, I want to thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate everyone's time and effort. All right. I'm going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Our intention spirit is to go ahead and get some really clear messages for piles one through three. And these are going to be letters from afar. They might be romantic. They might not necessarily be. We'll find out as your reading progresses. Okay. So that is our intent. Go ahead and set this baby aside. And without further ado, we're going to be looking at pile number one. Those of you that would like to choose pile number one, let's see what your card is going to be. Pile number one. We have, I'm listening to my higher self. A higher power is guiding me. How cool is that? And pile number two, show me for pile number two what their card is going to be and show me now. I feel like I don't deserve you. I'm worried you'll leave me when you really see who I am. Okay, that is pile number two. That's a little intense, huh? And last but not least, pile number three. Show me what I need to see for pile number three selection card and show me now. We are alchemists. We transform fear into love and shadow into light. I really love that. I love all that. So once again, let's see if we can get in a little bit clearer here. Pile number one. Pile number two and pile number three. I'll go ahead and be sure to get a close up for you guys. And I'll see you during your reading portion. Hi, pile number one. If you chose this beautiful card, this message is for you. If you missed the intro, pile number one, and you are brand new to my channel, I wanna send a super warm welcome to you. Thank you for stopping in. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, I wanna thank you so much for popping by again as well. Thank you all so much. Hope that everyone finds exactly what it is that you are seeking. So these are going to be love letters from afar. And this is for pile number one. I'm listening to my higher self now. A higher power is guiding me. Let's see what else we need to see about this. Show me what I need to see for pile number one. Other messages for pile number one, please. And show me now, like two messages. Here is one and here is two. And you'll notice I picked all the ones and 11 11s to go into this pile. So that's the only thing I'll be reading off of the Twin Flame Oracle deck <clears throat> excuse me so you have card number one here 
And it says, I feel ener your energy around me. And I wonder, are you thinking of me? So that's a message for somebody. And your other message, I'm realizing this connection is something special and worth treasuring. Okay. So you guys could be seeing my pile that's seen ones or a lot of one, one or one, one, ones or on the clock, 11, 11 as well. That happens to me quite a bit. So if this is resonating friends and this is your pile. So I'm feeling some separation in here. Let's find out a little bit more about what is going on and what kind of love letter, love letter are they trying to speak to you? Show me what I need to sing. Poor pile number one regarding this love letter. Love letter for pile number one and show me now. Let's take three cards. Okay. Let's kind of pan closer and hopefully I won't dump this all over the place. Yay. Did you hear the applause? No? It's too bad. Okay. So at the center we have, a little goes a long way. I feel like this is saying, dear pile number one, even though we spent a little bit of time together, maybe we didn't even get into a relationship. Maybe this could be someone that you met in passing. You are so potent that a little bit goes a long way. Your impact is not forgotten, pile number one. Emotional telepathy, I pick up on what you're feeling, yeah. And let me tell you, pile number one, I feel like this really is a direct tie between the first card that we got, well, the second one I flipped over anyways. I feel your energy around me and I wonder, are you thinking of me too? But part of that, I feel like that is telepathy, where you guys are telepathically communicating. I really hate when the glare gets like that. I wonder if I should just let it be all dark and gloomy in here. What do you think? What say you? Yeah, maybe that's better, marginally. And maybe that's best, I guess. Okay. So pile number one, this person definitely thinks a lot about you. This could have been somebody just in your friend group. This could be somebody that you met in passing. You could have met them at the airport, something like that. It doesn't have to be like you were in a lasting relationship whatsoever, but I feel like the connection and the impression that you made was definitely on point to the point where they actually cannot forget about you. I keep messing with these cards. You've broke down my walls and I was afraid. So I know it sounds really like too good to be true, but you can actually have encounters and connections with people that you have such deep conversation with that uh, I feel like you're my, my pile that actually causes tower moments. And if you have been noticing what's going on with people around you, I think that you'll pick up on this vibe quickly enough and recognize yourself. Um, I think that you're somebody who you can have maybe even a 10 minute quick conversation with someone and not even realize that you delve into some depth that they were not expecting and maybe even you weren't expecting. It just kind of transpired that way. But something about your connection with people overall tends to jolt them out of a slumber. I'm going to say it that way, okay? And I feel like this particular connection um, is someone that you may have been, you know, it's like a, a quick connect, <laughs> a quick connect. Just one of those things where you, um, it wasn't anything serious. You just kind of went about your business and didn't think twice about it. Maybe you did, um, but you know, with the emotional telepathy, maybe you had like a really in-depth conversation that was quite unexpected. And um, that really served to kind of keep this person in your, I guess you're on your radar, on your radar. Show me what I need to see. Love letters for pile number one 
regarding this person. I feel like it's more than just one person. I feel like it's people, plural. And show me now. Yep, content. So I feel like you discussed and hit upon things like, are you content? Are you happy with life? Is this what the only thing that life has to offer? Is this what mankind has to look for? Questions like that, that really wouldn't necessarily be directed in a personal way, but winds up being extremely personal when you're having discussions like that, okay? Um, I do feel like this person could be in for some of you guys in another connection. And when they came um, across you, or when they came into contact with you, it was something that was very unexpected. And I think that you kind of shook them. And not only shook them out of their complacency, sometimes we just get comfortable even in our own relationships, but I feel like it helped to kind of wake them up to see and reevaluate things. Like, is this really, you know, this connection really still good for me? What about anything else? I mean, almost like you hit a plateau where all the gears are firing perfectly and there's no need. We're lulled into a slumber, almost like being on a boat. I have a sense of feeling like maybe that, maybe some of you guys met this person on a yacht, on a boat, on a fishing trip, I'm going crabbing or anything like that. But I feel like even laying in a hammock, I have, I have a sway feeling kind of back and forth. Um, and it gives me the feeling of like, this other person has been almost like lulled to a sleep, like work is good, home is good, relationship is good. And then you came in like a tower and started asking questions like, really, is this all that life has to offer? And they started really thinking about things and like, wait a minute, I never actually really thought about it because I've been like in my happy zone. Um, and it's not a bad thing. I just do feel like you cause fear in people even without being aware um, because you break down walls and barriers that they're not willing to explore and look for themselves or even walls that they were not even aware of that were walls to begin with. So this is a difficult love letter because I do feel like it's not just one person. Show me what I need to see for pile number one. Love letters for pile number one and show me now. Diet. Let's get that. Let's get it in there. <laughs> okay, so this could be somebody who you went like a nutritionist or a dietitian or somebody that you're in a group with that you guys diet together, look after your health or like a personal trainer or somebody who is like a mentor. But this talks about a diet and you guys could have even had um, really deep conversations even so much as asking yourself, am I content with the content that I consume daily? I don't even think about it. I pick up, you know, my phone or my notepad or whatever the case may be. And I'm on a diet of what? Instagram, a diet of Facebook, a diet of NPR, could be. A diet of um, Rumble. <laughs> you know, anything that we kind of give ourselves over to. Um, and I feel like this could have had just a really big impact on them. It's like, yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's what I do. And it's like, wait a minute, is that what I'm happy with? And this is, is this what life has to offer? Body comfort, that's interesting coming out with the diet. So again, this could be like a workout partner, somebody that you met at the gym in passing or somebody that you bought gym clothes off of. I don't know, that's for somebody, somebody in your yoga class, things like that. So in passing, I feel like you have inadvertently caused a couple of tower moments. And I, again, I don't feel like it's just one person, okay? Let's see if we can get additional messages for pile number one. Show me what I need to see for pile number one. Love letters for pile number one. And show me now. I also feel like when you walk into a room, people feel your energy immediately. Um, if people are talking to another person, I feel like this other person, whoever sees you first can get distracted and like stop in mid conversation. They can like turn their heads. So I feel like your energy uh, is it precedes you, I think. Well, anyways, um, yeah, but sorry, my mouth is like literally up in that mic. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> But uh, your energy could really say a lot about you. And I feel like people 
kind of like all of a sudden like I'm sitting up straight, boobs out, shoulders back, and that kind of a thing, like snapping into attention. You could have that effect on people quite easily, even not knowing it, like when you walk into a room. And I feel like the energy field of the entire room just subtly changes, maybe not so subtly changes for some of you. Some of you guys are like, you know, obviously stunners, but others of you, you're actually incredibly beautiful as well, but your energy is what really kind of shakes people and speaks volumes before you even say a word. S strength, yeah. This is, I feel like this is my all time, one of my most beautiful cards. And the reason why I feel like this is an incredibly beautiful card is because this person has the power to open up that lion's mouth. They're not afraid of the roaring, snarling, hissing, spitting, foaming at the mouth lion. And really, the interesting part is that that lion really represents the, the demons within us all, right? What it is that we desire, the things that desire to conquer us, and things like that. And I think that this vibe is very beautiful because I feel like a lot of us have conquered a lot of demons within us um, and we're, you know, during the progress of our life. And I feel like that is uh, a mastery that comes across like non-verbally once again. And so I feel also like part of your love letter message would be like you are stunning when you walk into a room, whether you are quiet, um, whether people whip around and look at you or not, people are Oh my gosh see i just dropped my crystal you walk in with a crash okay and you definitely make an impact wherever you go i feel like um you could be like i don't know maybe even a leo um sun moon rising and you could be really attracted to sun colors such as yellows and orange and that hot white whatever the case may be but I feel like you've really conquered a lot within yourself and I think it comes across and people are really curious about you. Um, it's almost like brutal strength. I keep hearing the word brutal strength. So you could be, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to bench press or you can bench press. I mean, you can be somebody like that, but brutal strength can mean that you, you know, a clavo, you just, you did it the hard way, but you did it regardless. Okay. So love letter for pile number one is I see your hard work. I see how hard you worked on yourself. It's incredibly inspiring, even though I may be in a commitment right now or I'm committed to myself or I'm committed to my health. You've really <coughs> spoken some things that really made me think a lot about my own life, where I'm headed, where I'm at. Yeah, King of Cups. I feel like you have a couple of different people even looking at you. And this doesn't have to be romantic, connected, not connected, doesn't make a difference to me. Um, but this could be that people just really get you on an emotional level. And um, I feel like there is a certain freedom about you that gives other people wings with their throat chakra, their ability and their desire to speak. And I feel like people tell you things that they would never ever dare tell another person like a close person, let alone like a stranger. And I feel like you have that ability to open up doors and to get in there and be able to, I heard harvest, but I'm not meaning it like that. And harvest like information or like harvest or ferret out the truth of people. But I, I don't feel like those are all wrong words because those are like really aggressive words. Like, let me get this information from somebody. I just feel like by your nature, you welcome because of your gentleness, because of your self mastery and your ability to listen that people are just naturally drawn to you. So what I'm trying to say while I'm tripping all over myself and maybe people trip all over themselves trying to even speak to you, honestly, um, yeah, is that whenever you're in a situation where you're around people, that I feel like, number one, they could like the way your voice sounds, but they definitely like the way you speak. Um, there's a certain rawness, a toughness, a realness, a genuineness. I don't feel like um, you are definitely anything about falsehood or fakery. And that's what really causes people to open up, open up their heart, open up their minds, and really want to get in the flow of just even speaking to you. Things that could really cause them to... Um, how do I put it, like work hard to really bring forth 
and formulate ideas and notions and feelings. It just kind of pours forth and it's laid at your feet. And I don't think that there's like an agenda, again, on either side. I just think that naturally people open up to you, okay? Woo! Queen of Wands, why am I not surprised? Pile number one, so you could be a mover, a shaker, and a candlestick maker, right? So look at you, all fiery and queenly. Now again, in this channel, we read energy. We don't read sex. So I'm looking at her beautiful headgear. Of course, the tresses going on there. All that gorgeous fire back there. But I'm looking at the wand. And with this queen of wands, this queen is not effing around, right? This is a queen that she will take you to task. She will um, defend herself if she has to. This is queen's leader. Um, again, this queen actually is very much my like movie star queen when um, this person walks in a room, everybody turns around and it's more of an energetic thing, but how they carry themselves, how um, you guys respect yourself, I'm hearing, and also how you defend yourself. And it's like, you know what? <laughs> I heard, okay, I heard, I, bit, I wish a bitch would, okay? I feel like that's how you come across. I don't know if you know that about yourself or... Um, that people think this about you it's very interesting very very different energy show me last words for pile number one love letters this was a little bit all over the place i don't feel like just one person i feel like you tend to rivet the attention of many around you show me love letters for pile number one and show me now the four of wands i think people feel about you yeah with this diamond right here that you would make an incredible home or that you have an incredible home or it would be great to set up shop with you and that can look like in any ways like moving in together having a house together owning land having a co-op together um or even i heard enterprise you very enterprising you could be i feel like i'm talking all backwards yeah it's a one so you're very much fiery and i feel like with that you're like you know what i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get whatever it takes i am just gonna do it but the one thing that really stands out against everything else all this fire right is uh what's exceptionally unusual about you is the six of cups here and i'm looking at like yeah there might be a lot of options but i feel like you have like that sacred heart that very pure heart and that pure heart goes back to the ace of wands what it is that you desire but also i think of cups as like emotional healing and i feel like how you give to many different people it's almost like in this reading there was a lot of different personalities or or people that this could have been speaking about and um that's why it was kind of like a difficult love letter it was almost like you have the love letter of multitudes here Let's see if I can do this without like making a mess out of my camera again. Gosh, I know better than touch it. Just don't touch it. Damn it. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to get a couple more cards just because we can. Pile number one, we have the Knight of Swords. We have some spies around us. So I feel like your love letter could be saying, you know what? I still watch you in spite of all these years, in spite of all these things. I'm still fascinated by you. I'm still fascinated how you conquer everything. I'm still fascinated by how you work, what you work, what you do, the type of people that you attract. I'm fascinated to find the type of person that you have become. So if this is an ex, I feel like it's an ex-partner or an ex-lover or ex-something, okay? Um, and this person's very defensive, okay? Even though they... Um, really have a lot of admiration they're really defensive they don't want to give anything away it's almost like he's shielding his thoughts against you interesting look at these cards you guys are you not like riveted fascinating we've got the queen of swords here and so the queen of swords is another person of course another queen right here and i feel like this could be for some of you guys like different sides to you like that this person's saying you know what love letters to pile number one i'm gonna be spying on you checking you out you don't know it i see you giving to many different people i too give to many different people but what you're saying is you know what i see you too and i can cut a person if i wanted to and i see you giving to many people and I too give to many people. So if that fits your scenario, you guys are definitely marrying each other, okay? I love these two queens right here. This is just phenomenal. Seven of Swords. It's just saying, pile number one, your love letter. 
is that I like to do things on my own, but I still want to have my finger on the pulse as far as you are concerned. I just can't seem to let go. Yeah, with the Ace of Coins, I want to build, and I want to build with you specifically. I just don't want to vocalize that right now. It makes me feel vulnerable. I just want to feel like I'm shielding my mind. I even feel like some people sitting through this reading might be even saying, hey, stop reading my mind, but it goes back to that telepathic connection, right, that you guys have. The Knight of Coins, this person actually would like to deposit some time, energy, and effort into you. Here is a repetition of that diamond, right? And what do we talk about diamonds is like the, that commitment, but this is just a baby level. This is a Knight of Coins. Like, oh, I would like to spend some time with you. I'd like to get to know you, that kind of a thing. Seven of Wands, this is the same pile number one that this person or these people tend to be a little bit like cloak and dagger, right? They want to be a little bit like the lone wolf, but a little bit like I want to escape with something. So I want to get away with something. I want to get away with things. I want to get away with spying on you and you not knowing um, how much of an impact you've had in my life and things like that. I don't want you to know that I'm interested and I'm kind of checking you out once again. I just want to watch from behind the scenes, even though it may piss me off that you are giving to many others. So this, my friends, is pile number one's love letters if you um kind of like that reading let me know by smashing the like button share comment subscribe and we will see you at the next reading hopefully namaste Hi, pile number two. My name is Grisel with Psychic MD. I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for stopping by. For those of you that are repeat offenders, I appreciate your time and effort just in a popping over and see what's going on. And for those of you that are brand new, thank you so much. I hope that all of you come here, receive a message that it is that you wanted. That was really awkward, but you know what I'm saying. Now, obviously, um, this is a different setup, and I'm not shooting from my home, so the lighting is quite different, and I'm still fussing with it. No big surprise there. Pile number two. This is what I have for you. I feel like I don't deserve your love. I'm worried you'll leave me when you see who I really am. This is a card you chose. In pile number two, we're gonna get a little bit more clarification. Love letters for pile number two. Show me what I need to see. Love letters for pile two. And show me now. I need two more cards. Let's grab this one and this one. So, I'm trying to leave my comfort zone with this issue, okay? Yeah, so this person is in fear, I'll say that. Um, obviously this person has a lot of fear about what you think about them. They could be putting on a lot of facades. Is that a thing? That's a thing apparently. And this person is really trying to grow through it. They're trying to really obtain a level of, a level of level headedness. Can you, can I say that? I just did. I'm such a rebel. A level of level headedness. I'm going to go with that. And they're really trying to leave their comfort zone. And that tells me that they're really used to kind of putting up a front or a facade with other people. I'm not really being their most authentic self. And something about that has really kind of led them down <clears throat> away from the straight and narrow. I feel like um, they put on pretenses and different masks in order to appeal to certain dem demographic I heard, but to appeal to um, lovers and friends and partners, same, same, right? Communication, when our conversations are lighthearted and playful, it eases attention. That is sometimes there when we talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised at all. Pile number two, pile number two. This person does like listen when you have those deep talks. And I don't even think that you set out to have like deep talks. You're just kind of like, I'm just talking. Why do you mean deep talks? But this is the pile where they have to maybe sometimes diffuse with humor. They have to really go back and rethink things through. Um, this is a pile that they'll go back and revisit your conversation. Um, and, you know, after you've had the conversation, obviously, in order to really make an assessment of, 
of how they feel about it, how they think about it. And they really take it, their time with this, which is kind of interesting. And I don't think they let a lot of people know that either. Pile number two, let's get some more energy. Show me what I need to see and show me now. Two more cards for pile two. We're doing a total of four. I got some flips. So let's do these guys first. Holding on to an old flame. What? Mm-hmm. So I feel like part of this energy is, yeah, holding on to an old flame and knowing that if you were to know about this or if they were to fess up about it, that you would just cut it short. You would be like, yep, next. Now serving 9,099. It's just not my thing, right? So I feel like if they were up and honest about it, that they're thinking and feeling that you would just not have it. And I, I get that. Let's see if we can zoom out a little it's scary to move this thing because every time i do it seems like i have a hazard sorry about that pal number two what i was saying is that every time i seem to move this tripod thing it's always a hazard and i run the risk of causing like severe disaster just like now so it stopped recording and I kept flipping and talking, but we're going to recap here. So pile number two, holding on to an old flame. This could be definitely about somebody who is holding on to an old flame. For some of you guys, actually, I'm feeling a little bit of black magic vibe. Somebody could have a hold on this person as well and have them in fear, okay? It could be that they are in fear and moving on because they are under tight grip of somebody else who is a narcissist, probably. That's somebody who just wants their way and is willing to do whatever it takes, regardless of the repercussions. Personally, this is why I don't believe in spell magic, spell work, and things like that. Um, at least not for any love bonds. I just think it's not good. We all have free will, but that's my personal opinion. Moving on. So I feel like this person is definitely afraid and they are afraid to reveal themselves and who they are. Um, they are somebody that you have worked out of their comfort zone a little bit, but they really want to talk on a kind of like shallow terms, like, hey, what's up, Netflix and chill, or, or what's going on, how are you doing, that kind of a thing, but they have nothing to offer, nothing to say. It's just all about the vacancy. <laughs> and I can't stress this enough. I feel like you guys are on two totally different pages. Um, and the thing is, they're not on the page of, hey, how are you doing? Like, it's a repeat. Um, one time I used to joke that I would be like the worst phone sex operator because I'd be like, hi, how are you doing? Oh, okay. So what are you wearing? <laughs> and then we would repeat, oh, okay. So what are you wearing? Oh, wait, we're nothing. We're not wearing anything. Got it. Okay. So yeah, how are you doing? It goes back to the same thing. And it just doesn't make any sense, right? Nobody gets to the point. I feel like this person in your love letter is really saying, you know what? I really... Feel like I don't deserve you. There might be some shady stuff going on with me. I might have some stuff you don't know about that I don't want you to know about. Perhaps intellectually, spiritually, mentally. I heard egotistically, I don't know. Um, I don't feel like I measure up. It could be any of those things. And that's why when we communicate, I really feel and I prefer that it's better off if it's on a lighter vibe, which is fine. You could have superficial conversation, I guess, and talking about the weather and, hey, how about the Raiders or whatever it is that you want to talk about. Um, but I don't think that that holds your attention. And I think that you tend to just turn your switch off. You're like, Psh, next. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything for you. And Paul number two, um, I don't think that, I think there's a little bit of tug of warring going on. What I don't think you realize is that pile number two, this person is saying, you know what? I definitely feel the same way you do. I'm intrigued by you. I'm riveted actually, but I can't really connect on that same level. Something is holding me back. Whether it's somebody that has spell work over me, I feel like I can't cross that line or whether I'm connected to someone else, which I definitely should not be crossing that line um, or whatever it is. I don't really want to expose myself. I don't want to be naked with my thoughts. Maybe perhaps they're a little bit or a lot of it too different than yours, or perhaps I just don't know the nature of where these discussions are gonna lead and I'm feeling a little bit fearful. Um, I prefer to keep them superficial. But pile number two, I also wanna say that this person feels seduced by you. 
okay? So there is definitely a seduction of the mind. It could be even of the body, yes, but of the soul. And I feel like um, this person is making attempts to leave their comfort zone to really kind of grow in this area, but they may not know how. And they could go back to behavioral patterns that they've um, mimicked from the past, like when they've grown up, parents communicate a certain way or roommates communicate a certain way, family members, things like that. So their prototypes, their, I heard modules. <laughs> this person could be really, I'm not laughing, sorry. I am, but this person could even be saying like, what a healthy relationship would look like and maybe doing modules, who knows, right? We're like in a progressive world and we all need help in, in the same areas probably. But um, this person also, I'm gonna say, you could be also this person's old flame. Like they could look at you and, and always have this feel, this connection, and this pull towards you. And this person is feeling like you seduce them. Like your energy has been seducing me like forever and ever. This could be somebody like a blast from the past. This pile number two could be, you know, several people. I'm reading, this is not a personal reading, so it's not gonna resonate with everybody. Um, but this person could be someone that you have mentally seduced from long ago and they might be like, I don't know, in the shadows. I just kind of, I don't feel like anything malicious about it, but just really observing your energy, okay? Now, they feel like this connection is really deep. It could be for higher purpose. And not all relationships are designed, you know, to be your it person or the one or the only, whatever. I mean, we're here really to kind of learn from each other and to spark the best and the worst so that we all kind of ebb and flow. And um, I think relationships are really complex and, and uh, way more dimensional than we give it credit for. So when I talk about, I guess, relationships, it, it doesn't always have to mean like, oh, just one-on-one -on -one and this is your romantic person, okay? Uh, but it can mean, you know, you define it however you will. I'm just feeling like in this reading, in your love letter, pile number two, I feel like this person has a lot of depth, a lot of emotion. And yeah, I feel like a lot of um, eroticism. But I also feel like they feel a little bit possessive about you. And this is maybe like the whole holding onto an old flame. Now, some of you guys, this could be the whole black magic thing. But for others of you, this could be like clenching, like almost like you're my possession, you're mine. What movie was that? Oh, yeah, of course. Anyways, we're not gonna talk about that. Um. So you've seduced this person with your energy, with your aura, with maybe conversations you've had in the past, and maybe you've kind of even moved on, not even given it a second thought, but um, don't turn your back on me. This states to me like when this person does communicate and they give you the shell, hey, what's up? How's it going? Which is fine um, if you initiate that, but it never seems to go beyond like the first layer. You know, you've got the dermis and the epidermis and so on and so forth it just never gets beyond the very top layer of the skin and uh, i think for a lot of you guys that's just not really doing it for you huh? that's a feeling that i'm getting um and come to me i'm calling you i feel like this person could even be kind of a little bit obsessing over you um because they have a lot of depth of emotion and yet they want to keep it shallow which is really interesting it's like i don't want to talk about that i want to talk about like yeah let's just you know the weather and the raiders and the dodgers and um anything that they're willing to really discuss within any depth might be something that they can master easily it might be their profession um, something that they intellectually know a lot about. But when it comes to emotions, anything that has a draw on them emotionally, they're not gonna go there. I'll just tell you that, even though there's a lot of emotion. <laughs> Literally, this card is emotions. I totally forgot. So this card's emotions. So this person can have a lot of just feelings for you that is just like free flowing. And free flowing in a way that's not even like, in a way that they're even bringing it forth to you, which is really interesting. For a lot of you guys, they could be looking back. I'm getting a lot of like Six of Pentacle energy, almost like, um, you know, a blast from the past energy. That could be somebody that you went to school with, high school with, whatever. And uh, they could just be feeling really possessive of you, but not knowing what to say. I'm really suspicious of this camera. I don't want to mess with it anymore, but 
there's always a problem as to how I can set it up and it makes me nuts. Okay, it is still filming. <sighs> Cause sometimes I just can't see what's going on. Pile number two. Show me what I need to see. Love letters for pile number two. What's this person all about? What do they want to say in their love letter for pile two? And show me now. Mm -hmm. Seven of coins. This person is looking at their assets. Is it worth my time? Is it worth my energy? Will I get exactly what it is that I need, that I want, that I desire? But also... There's an element of selfishness here. It's like, I don't want to put myself out there unless I have some kind of guarantee, right? Nothing's guaranteed in life, you guys. You know that. Ain't nothing guaranteed. Show me what I need to see. Her pile two in the love letter and show me now. <laughs> two sevens. They, they want to know for sure that they're going to be lucky with you. Pile number two. I have two sevens on the board. This is my ultra like spiritual pile, I feel. But there's an element of like earthiness and groundedness, emotional gratification. Um, it's almost like tit for tat. Will I get this for that? And I feel actually a lot of sexual energy coming through. So I said it didn't have to be, but now I'm feeling like it is. So I got the hangman right here. So this person is saying, you know, um, I don't want to really have any deep discussions. I'm definitely looking at things differently, but I'm seeing what are my options? Is it worth my time, energy, and effort? Is this gonna be beneficial for me? And yeah, when I text, when I call, don't turn turn your back on me. Eight of Swords. This person is saying, you know, I'm in my head. I don't really know. I do have a different perspective. I have the star right here. This gives me hermit vibes. This could be like Virgo, um, but it also could be saying that with this star, I want what I want, and I have this dream, this desire, and I feel like I'm getting clarity on it, but I still feel caught up in my mind. And so I feel like we have a deep connection and yet we have a stalemate. I feel like I can't come any closer. There's not a lot of what I can do. I'd love to offer you what it is that maybe you'd like to have offered. Maybe that's why I don't want to discuss my emotions or have anything like that because right now is the wrong timing, right person, wrong time, or, um, something to that effect for whatever it is i can't speak my truth the pile number two and yeah it's all about the judgment feeling like i feel like you're gonna judge me and i feel like if we do have deep discussions that you're gonna have the ability to raise up all these dead bodies from like these skeletons from my past from what is that's really going on you're gonna raise them from the dead when i'm trying to kind of bury them actively and not talk about them and that's the fear in having deep discussions with you is that you'll really bring forth things and topics that i really cannot address don't want to address not ready to address and that you'll make a judgment against me because of it now with the red cross right here i feel like i know that um, you could be very healing, that you're very caring and things like that. But I don't want all my dirty laundry in front of you because like I have these other needs that are like fulfilled. Now I have a high priestess right here. This person knows that you're really divinely connected. And this person also has a secret or you, they could feel like you have a secret, right? But I feel like it's this person that has a secret. <gasps> keep touching the stupid camera you guys I don't know I'm gonna wind up buying a different one it's making me crazy okay pile two show me what I need to see for pile two and show me now I'm gonna get one more of these manifestation so I feel like this person has been trying to manifest you into their world I feel like there's a lot of emotion that they're essentially just buried under a ton of emotion but there might be a lot of skeletons that they're afraid that um you might bring up or there's a need for you guys to discuss for whatever reason whether you have a relationship in the past or if they're doing something currently that they know you're going to disagree with i don't really know your story i just got candle wax on my cards oh that makes me sad okay but if you're not right so I feel like this person definitely has a desire to have deeper talks with you, but they don't really know like how that would look. 
um, they're trying to manifest you. And I want to know why. Like, what exactly? It's almost like they they blow hot and cold. It's like, hey, when I'm, when I'm around, I want you to give me all your attention. But don't have deep talks. No. No, no. Okay. But then it's almost like they want all the benefits without investing any time, energy, effort, or giving you any clear explanation. And that's kind of uh, not going to happen, right? Illumination, yeah. So I feel like they know that you are deeply in touch with spirit. And I feel like also they're trying to gain their own clarity, their own illumination. But I also feel like at times they could feel like you're the illumination. And that's part of the draw. They're drawn to you because you're close to spirit, because you have that part in you that just really brings out the best in them. And they're a little bit afraid. Yeah, they're afraid that you're bringing out that hope that they've maybe long buried in their life, in their heart. Um, they didn't expect to have that back this dark, dark door. It's almost like an abyss right behind this person. I feel like this person's like even holding their heart chakra away. And maybe that's why they don't want to really have any deep talks because they're protecting their heart, right? And your last message right here, pile number two is about loyalty. So this just speaks to me about this person maybe being um, loyal to a fault and maybe they fear being hurt once again. So there could be a lot of elements of like, you give me hope and I have this desire, but I can't even communicate with you because I've been burned before. I don't know what the deal is, okay? This person is not right in the head insofar as they don't know their own mind, okay? So I'm not saying there's any mental illness. I'm just saying if you don't know your own mind, then you pretty much need to stay away <laughs> until you figure it out. Um, there's no need to kind of pee in somebody else's pool if you're not going to I don't know why I brought up that analogy, but you're welcome. But if you're not going to, you know, own up to it or do things properly, there's no proper way to pee in anybody's pool. Scratch that. Nobody pee in anybody's pool, okay? That's all I have for you. Um, yeah, manifestation. I feel like they have a great tenderness to you. This person is holding a shell very tenderly, okay? Yikes. I'm going to sign off because now I'm getting messages that are like not PG-13 whatsoever. And I'm just not wanting to make these 18 plus and plus I'm trying to really curb my gutter mind. So I'm going to end it there. You guys can use your imagination with this image as you will. And I want to thank you again so much for your time, your energy. Pile number two. Until next time. Namaste. Hi friends, my name is Crystal with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do your pick a card pile number three. This message is for you. If you missed my intro, then I want to extend a very warm welcome to anyone who is a repeat offender. Thank you for showing up once more. And for those of you that are brand new, thank you so much for stopping in as well. I really appreciate your time and energy. Hopefully everyone will receive exactly what it is that they are seeking in this message. Now, you chose pile number three. We are alchemists. We transform fear into love and shadow into light. So, you're definitely a bit of an alchemist here. Hmm? Show me what I need to see for pile number three. Love letters, please. Pile number three. Love letters and show me now. I'm gonna take a total of four cards. And let's see what's going on here. Pile three, we have my heart is with another right now. I have to finish this karmic contract in order to be free. It sounds like your person or this love letter that's extended to you might be woke which is good it's good if you hear that funny breathing i promise it's not me it's my dog in pile three i have communication i care about you even when i act like i don't i'm hiding my true feelings because i feel vulnerable yep and actually, it's no surprise because the number three, of course, to me, I think, I think cooperation. I also think 
third party when they start talking like this. Pile three. Your love letter says, I feel the sexual energy between us, yet it's beyond physical attraction. It needs to be elevated to the expression of deep, unconditional love. So I do feel like this person is woke. Obviously, this person, because they say they're another connection, they're in a karmic bond as of right now. So let's explore a little bit more about what exactly is going on here. What's going on? Show me what I need to see for pile three. Where are these cards here on the board for us? Pile three. Show me what I need to see for pile three. And show me now. Go ahead and get four cards for this as well. And let's see what we have. We have... I'm scared you might know my secrets. Pal three, someone is hiding something. My energy is being drained. Probably by this karmic connection here, if I had to guess. You really got a hold on me. It almost even seems like this is, I don't want to say seedy or hidden, a lot of subterfuge, but that's kind of how it's feeling. I pray for you, my love. Okay. So obviously these are really intense cards. Pile three. Let's see if we can get this without causing a commotion, a ruckus, a fuss, a hazard, a problem. So good so far. So I'm being drawn to this right here. It's like you really have a hold on me. And, you know, it's obvious that this person is in a karmic tie right here. That's what they're stating to us. Um... And I feel like part of this love letter to you is that I realize I'm in a karmic tie. I realize that things need to be better. I need to do better because I realize and understand better. Um, I think there's a lot of denial about denying their feelings. Even this person's post in prayer. This one says, I pray for you, my love. This person could actually be literally praying about you and for you. Um, and even I feel like a desperation, like a desire to keep you open, so to speak, um, while they wrap up their affairs. That's kind of what I'm feeling right here. And and again, if you're in communication or semi-communication, I don't feel like there's a lot of communication, if any. But I feel like even here, it says I care about you even when I act like I don't. So this gives me the impression and it reinforces that feeling that this person may be around you. You might see each other in social settings. You might even know the karmic partner. Y'all might belong to the same friend group. Hopefully not. That gets really messy. Messy pile three. What's going on here? Show me what I need to see for pile three. What are these love letters here for pile three? And show me now. I'm taking, let's do three of these cards here. Fill in this. And this. Okay. So this came out in one of the other piles. I won't mention which one. If you feel led to something else, go ahead and watch that. If not, that's perfectly all right as well. I feel like there's a part of this woman's heart that's just drained. And um, with this even saying that my karmic partner is draining my energy, basically, I feel like this person is also being not only drained of emotion, it's they're losing hope. It's like being drained of hope. They don't want you to know that they actually have all these feelings for you. And that's kind of interesting. But I feel like part of the reason why they don't want you to know that is because they're caught up in a situation. Why am I getting, okay, the same darn cards. <laughs> I literally not only shuffle, but 
I put them in different spots individually so that this doesn't happen because it kind of makes me crazy when I get repeat cards. But for whatever reason, I do feel like you have a message, another pal. Uh, manifestation. This person I feel like is trying to manifest you in secret. I feel like with all the pink right here, there's a lot of love, a lot of feelings of love, a lot of watery depth, a lot of tumultuous thoughts and feelings that this person is having. Um, even with a conscious, I kind of feel like these seashells really mimic or imitate or echo kind of the shape of our ear. And whenever I see that, I tend to think about hearing, like this person is maybe even clairaudient or they're hoping to telepathically communicate with you, even though um, when you see them in person or even communicate however, whether it's by email or text or whatever, they're not expressing much emotion towards you. And obviously there's a reason, that's because someone else is there triggers. Now it's interesting to me this card actually came up. Not only that, but I feel like their mind gets triggered. It's like they know they're caught up in a karmic tie. They know they need to kind of change things, especially because I feel like it says, um, I feel the sexual energy between us, yet it's beyond the physical attraction. It needs to be elevated to the expression of deep unconditional love. And um, this person knows that obviously you have like a lot of chemistry and things like that, but I feel like this person really understands that there is a higher connectivity with you guys. Um, and I feel like it plays upon their mind. I also feel like they are, these roots go really, really deep. So this person could have been thinking this way for a long time, or this person is in deep, deep thought. This person is saying, you know, I know I don't show it. I can't possibly show you how I feel, what I'm thinking right now. But this has been like really planted and growing for a long time. My throat chakra is learning how to grow a little bit. So perhaps I'm going to start expressing things and um, even <sighs> dealing with things that I've repressed. Perhaps the fact that I'm caught in a karmic tie. With all the blue on the background, I definitely feel like this is a desire to communicate, desire to speak their truth. And this, of course, is a barren land almost, where even within their body, they could even feel physical symptoms of you. That is to say, they feel physical symptoms of their connectivity with you. They're being drained emotionally by a karmic tie as well. Um, knowing that they have to finish a karmic tie. So I don't feel like it's somebody that they just, you know, loosely don't, they don't care about or whatever. It's definitely a difficult time for them, okay? And I I know right here, it talks about we are alchemists. We transform fear into love. And this person's undergoing a major transformation. There is a major fear about letting go. Now think about that for a moment. I mean, it's easy for us to say, well, if they love me so much, if they care or they're so interested, you know, they can just leave the other person. It would be that easy. But honestly, Dorothy, we would both be having our picnic baskets and skipping along the yellow brick road if we all thought that way all at once, wouldn't it? I mean, life isn't quite that simple. So there are obligations, financial constraints, there are emotional ties, there are other people's feelings involved. There's a lot that goes on here. And um, I, I know personally, like I want to quickly dismiss, I'm like, if somebody else is involved with somebody else, I want no part of it. Um, and so I'm extremely dismissive. I'm like, Psst, next, <laughs> there's just no way that I want to be involved in that. I used to have a coworker who, can, who would, oh, never mind, I can't say that. Okay, I can't say this. But anyways, my whole point being, um, this right here, even the heart, I feel like this is addressing the heart chakra. And so that tree seems to be growing. So I feel like it's like they think about you quite a bit. The love letter to you is, you know what, I'm caught up in karmic tie. I definitely have feelings for this person. But the more I think about you, the more engaged I get. The more I think about you, the more feelings I get. The more engaged and I think about you, the more emotion I have towards you. Um, the only thing left is the speech, is the speaking the truth out into the open. And now the more I look at this card, I'm feeling like nerves. It's almost like... Um, you trigger somebody's nerves, but not in that way. It's almost like misfiring and they could start having like maybe nervous tics. This person could have like eye twitches going on and um, sleepless nights and having some anxiety. And uh, I think it's due to repressing their emotions. And it's not like they have it all kind of locked down and knowing what it is that they want or where they want to head towards or anything smooth like that. But I feel like just even sprouting truth 
you know, to their karmic tie or saying, hey, we have a problem here. Um, that is not being done thus far. And so it is a very difficult, difficult position to be in. I said difficult, like it's death or something. Okay. Show me what I need to see for a pile three. Love letter for a pile three, please. Show me what I need to see for a pile number three. And show me now. Four of Cups. I want to keep my emotions to myself. Pile number three. I have a lot of emotion, a lot of sadness, a lot of feeling like I'm turning my back on you or I have turned my back on you. And yet I want to manifest you back into my life or simply into my life. I also have this deep thing where I think cunningly and I think about how I can... Um, really integrate you into my life or back into my life, whatever the situation may be. I also feel like this person is saying, pile number three, I really dig you. I check up on you. I look after you. Even though this person is facing, you know, that way with a sword on a defensive posture or even almost near aggressive posture, I would say. Um, and it's almost like right between the eyes. I feel like their spirit, their third eye even is opening and they're defensive towards it. This could be somebody who, yeah, is awake or woke, whatever you want to call it, but they don't necessarily want to go with that narrative because it doesn't fit their tidy little plan. And that could be really difficult if your plans go awry or things don't go according to what you struggled and fought through. That could be a really difficult challenge. Um, I also want to say that this person does keep their eye on you. I think I did mention that before, but they're actually, I do, they almost look like hearts from here, but Griselle, I need some new glasses. So um, they're actually not hearts. They almost look like locks, but I feel, you know, the overall feeling to this is I'm looking at the past. I know that I withheld emotion from you. Maybe I wasn't in a position to really be open with you about how I was feeling. I felt kind of uh, repressed. I withheld from you, but I keep an eye on you. I keep you know, looking at what you're doing, who you're with, are you still free? Are you available? Did you get married? Are you, you know, all of these different variables. And yet this person has a sword up, propped up and ready for a battle, okay? Also this person, Knight of Wands, this person is like fully armored. You can't even see who the hell they are, but now where they're blocking their third eye, now I feel like their um, third eye is wide open. So I feel like they undergo um, <laughs> periods of, being completely shut down with their third eye, like they can't see anything happening. They don't really understand what the big deal is with this connection with you. Um, and then other times when their eyes are wide open and they're like, wow, you know, I just, I'm missing a really good thing and I really need to do something about it. Things like that. Now this rod right here is right at his lips. And I feel like this li lips, this is all about repressing. This is about shh. Like, don't speak. I don't want to speak this, but like, I still have the hots for you. And with the, um, this, the sail right here, the ship, I feel like this is like, and that's a right hand on theirs. It's the optician's left. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyways, um, but it is the right hand to this knife. So this is stating basically like this person is burning for you. They're still eyeballing you. They still, you know, like want to get it in. They are looking to spend some time with you. They have a lot of sexual energy, but also their eye their third eye is awake. And when they allow that to play out, it is very difficult for them to remain um, in the lie that they are currently in right now. There's really no other way to put it because we can choose to be awake and aware of what is going on. And then we can choose to switch things off and remain in denial. So it's not a pretty picture that I'm painting, but honestly, that's life. That is with most of us and what most of us do. So I don't feel, you know, there's no judgment there. Um, I feel like we've all done it to one extent or another about one thing or another. Now, next in line we have next on the board, I guess I meant to say, is a justice card. And this could have to, something to do with maybe a Libra. Um, not necessarily. This could be involving somebody who is in law and litigation um, or somebody who is in law enforcement or simply somebody who is looking to really set the scales I heard the word awry, which is really interesting, but they're trying to set the scales in balance, in balance, not in balance, okay? So the, all the puns and the play on words and the near misses with the vocabulary, this person could be really, um, have like a really big 
I don't know, I heard the word duplicity. Um, but I feel like they are two of mind, you know, one minute they're this and one minute they're that, but it's extreme. The one minute it's all about you and your luscious hair and how regal you look and how they would love to undress you with their eyes, with their hands, with their mouth, whatever the case may be, um, and how they want to set things um, in motion to be fair to you and how they respect how sharp you are and how much of a, hmm, well, how much of a being you are if you have to be, right? I feel like that's kind of like exciting to this person that you can actually pull out the bitch and um, they respect that and they really enjoy it. And then on the other hand, they're like, you know what? I want to set those scales in full swing all over the place. Yep, this is what I was thinking. Oh my gosh, I just threw all my cards on the floor. Nice. Yeah, going, good going. Anyways, but this person I feel like could be obsessive. This person could be saying, you know, as much as I really want to get things right, I just feel kind of enslaved. I don't want to let go of what I have and the history of what I've currently been building and, and, and you know, what I have. I don't want to mess up the trajectory of what's going on right now. And yet they really understand that they can't really have you in any other way. They do understand it's an elevated kind of love. And this one, I am feeling more like the love vibes and um, I feel like a past connection as well. But for whatever reason, you know, they're choosing to be enslaved and not choosing. So not choosing is always making a choice anyways. Um, I even feel like this devil's kind of waving and it's like, hey, what's up? You know, this person can have a lot of addictions. They could be addicted to alcohol. They could be addicted to sex. They could be addicted to having many men or many women or both, honestly, um, have their attention at one time. They could be addicted to body art, to tattooing, to body modifications. They could be addicted to... Um, having, you know, like in the king community, having slaves and uh, having posture colors. What, I don't know, whatever the thing is that they're into. It's like, hey, what's up? I don't want to give it up. Or it's almost like, you know, they're, they're owning it. They're owning what it is that they're about. But by the same token, you know, there are times when the third eye pops open to wake them up and remind them, hey, remember, remember where you're at remember who you are and is this what you really want and i almost see like where this devil is standing it almost looks like a vacant green eye so the green to me represents a heart chakra and it's almost like i'm not looking with my heart i'm looking with my lust with my sex with my organs with my money my pocketbook i'm looking to protect all of my emotions too and i do feel like there have been some tears here um, but this person would never ever tell you that right that's some kind of a messed up love letter it's this is almost like he wants me he wants me not that's a kind of love letter it's like hey pal three i really want you and i see you know really good things for us and we have a higher elevated kind of love and i feel this deep connection even though I pretend that you know we're not connected but i have really really deep feelings for you and then he or she wants me not it's like look i'm in a connection you know we have this going on we have um, our 401k and our bank accounts and we've bought land and properties and businesses and whatever, whatever, um, whatever we build, we've had children together and I'm not about to lose out on that or mess up what I, I have committed to build. So I'm going to put my back to you because, um, that's all I can do. Like that was then, this is now. So I feel like this person does burn hot and cold quite a bit, but when they stand and they stand, and take a moment to breathe and take a moment to really, I heard release or a moment to just allow their heart to speak because there's not a lot of heart out here. You know, there's a heart to um, control their emotions and their reputation, I feel. When they really allow things to play out, when they look in the mirror, I feel like that's when they get misty eyed, that's when they get sad, that's when they look back with regret at what coulda, shoulda, woulda been. Um, I feel like, you know, some tears do get, uh, loosed <laughs> use your words Grisel. um some tears could be released during the times when they look in the mirror and they think man i really effed up or there's no way out of this i feel like that kind of thinking you know i mean you if you think you can then you totally can if you think you cannot you're also right so that's entirely up to the person right but i think this person has a lot of uh growing to do 
show me what I need to see for a pile three in this love letter, this strange hot and cold love letter. Pile three, show me what I need to see and show me now. We have beginnings. We have hitting a wall. I feel like this person has hit a wall with where they're at currently and they really want a new beginning and they are considering, they know they have to elevate things in order to get that kind of love. They have to really straighten out their game. Illumination, I feel like there's two people here for you, by the way, feeling the same way and almost the same narrative. So it's almost like a cycle of people around you, which means it leads me to believe that you're in a cycle as well. Um, but there's two people that feel connected, identical stories in this, okay? generosity. So I feel like this person could be surrounded by gossip. You could be surrounded by gossip. Um, I feel like they're the center of attention. Um, and also, I feel like you're the center of attention as well. And just other people are talking a lot of smack. And you could feel that intuitively. Um, you could feel that people have gone maybe icy around you, maybe connections that were once warm and very casual and they'll send their crispy and cool as December, baby. Yeah. Show me what I need to see for pile three and show me now. Unexpected. Okay, that's a beautiful dress. I love these cards. Um, unexpected. Interesting. I'm not really even sure quite sure what to think about this. But I feel like this person might even act impulsively. Okay, because we have like I'm headed somewhere. Illumination of candles to me is always about really getting deep within yourself. And I'm um, seeing the wisdom, even like opening up the third eye and getting wisdom that way. But I feel like there's too many people in the mix and not just their partner or significant other. Let me see if I can get any last messages for pile number three. Pile number three, last messages for D and show me now. Differences, well, of course. Don't we all have differences? Okay, more than one. Dreams, they definitely see you in their dreams. And with their dreams, I'm getting a lot of white. White can also represent, like in this case, I'm trying to ice out people that are speaking smack. Yeah, content, they wanna know if you're content, if you're happy. And I feel like there is a desire to communicate. I feel like sometimes they even dream or daydream that they were with you or like that you were their partner, that kind of a thing. They daydream or dream that um, they have chosen differently and what would life look like if they had chosen with you, if perhaps they, they um, would have chosen a life with you versus a different person, or if they chose to pursue you um, versus throwing in their lot with someone else, something like that. Now there is an element here that talks about obviously patience because a card says so, but we all know like horses are really intuitive and I feel like this person would come towards you knowing that you're like really kind of gun shy, almost like all this gear that this horse has is designed not only for like aesthetics to look beautiful and things and to pull the carriage physically, but also to really kind of control and to manipulate and to signal the horse which way it should go, what it should do and at what time. Um, and this person can know very well that like anything that they could do could really spook you because I feel I heard bad taste in my mouth. Things left a bad taste in my mouth, okay? Yeah, grieving. So you or the other person or both of you could be in a stage of grieving. I feel like this, that's interesting. For some of you, this could have been even um, the same narrative, the same story, obviously different depths of stories, but the same thing going on with two different people. I just keep getting two. So obviously this is not gonna be the same for all of you but it's for someone, yeah, clearing. So this person's love letter is saying, you know what, I still lust after you, I still want you, I still feel like we could be the ideal couple. Um, I'm working on things, I can't necessarily just take off right now. It's almost like they wanna put you on hold, put you on pause, put you on the back burner, or put baby in the corner. And the answer to that is <laughs> a resolute hell to the no. <laughs> so. What you talking about, Willis? You better clear your own ish before you come to my corner. Like, we don't want to clean up other people's messes. We don't want to be in the middle of relationships 
whether good, bad, or ugly. Listen, I've had people come towards me and say, you know, my wife is, she's got health issues and blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, we, you know, live in the same house, but we're not intimate, we're not close. And I'm like, yeah, when you fix your problem, give me a call. I'm not about that life. So I don't feel like that's anything that you're accepting either. Um, yeah, look, I just flipped this card bottom of the deck. Don't force me to love you or I'll run. And the answer to love letter number three would be bye, Saka. <laughs> You're already massively entangled, not even just a little bit. So I don't think pile number three that you want to be choice number three or even choice number two. Um, I do feel like there's, you know, people on the board here for you that have an obsession with you, cannot let you go. But for whatever reason, they've attached themselves to someone else. I, I don't know. I, I think you're not. Come to me calling you in. Okay. See what else we get. You captivate me. And you know, I don't know. I feel like this is more of an ego. It's like you captivate me. Why? Because somebody said no to you. It's almost like a toddler. You know, somebody says no to you and you want it more. Come on with us. Um, it's just ridiculous. Euphoric love making. Okay, so very sexual. These two people could feel incredibly sexual about you. Um, or have like sexual fantasies or just be riveted and that's like the main thing on their head I feel a shift between us okay and we have like of course hot men vibes if you guys been watching my channel at all this is like one of my all-time favorite cards because I love the whole hot men thing that being said um I kind of feel like you're saying three strikes you're out. So for one of them, I feel like you've given them a few chances and they screwed it up. And you're saying, you know what, three strikes you're out and it's already been played. This is a done deal. Struggling to find self, yeah. And so this person is teetering between woke and not being woke and they know damn well. Well, like once you're woke, once you see something, you can't unsee it. So the problem with this is just denial. It's not wanting to act on anything. Um, that is true, that is like, it has blatant evidence behind it. So frankly, I just feel like you are gonna say no to this, but it is two different people. Um, let's see if I can even get any more information on them. Show me about these two people. Four pile three and show me now. <laughs> My cards are like, I'll show you. We've got the Five of Cups, so somebody who would have had a lot of regret, a massive loss, um, a lot of sadness. Oh, God, I need glasses. Okay. <laughs> it is the Six of Cups. This is somebody who's been giving to everybody and their mom. Okay, literally. So this person gives, like, indiscriminately. You want some? Here you go. You want some? Here you go. The Magician. They just want to recall your energy back. They want to. This is somebody who is an easy, easy manifester. What's it? Easy. <laughs> so the Knave of Wands, yeah, once again, just uh, all about fire, all about the sex. This person be in and out of your life. This looks to me like a mosquito. It's almost like they want to come in to bug you and then just dip, that kind of a thing. Um, so not a lot of staying power. Okay, and then we have this right here. So this could be a person also that you've had on your mind for a long, long time. I look at the green ribbon and how she's like naked. But interestingly enough, she's like pouring all of this into the third vessel being like the pool down here. So with the star, this is about healing. This is somebody that maybe you need some healing with because I thought that was like the five of cups, even though it was a six. Knave of cups, this person can have a child. It could be really fair skinned or look a lot younger than what they are or have very kind of immature communication with you. Like, man, I really miss you. And that's the end of it. Like there's nothing backing that up. There's no substance, yeah. Um, this also could have been about somebody that you had a massive change. Like it changed your life, it changed their life, and it completely severed everything. With the red cord, it really disrupted your root chakra, your balance, um, your home life. And lastly, this could also and or involve somebody who has the emperor um, energy, the person who is like, you know, it's my way or the highway, and that's the end of the story. I know best, that kind of a thing. I have all the answers, even though they don't. 
nobody has all the answers. So that is what I have for you, Pal 3. If you like this kind of reading, smash that like button, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, namaste.